Hi, I'm Buster. Um, I have been sort of interested in the quantified self stuff for uh, 12 or so years. Um, my first quantified self experiment was back in the first days of blogging when I would track all the links that I liked and I read around the web and I would track whether or not it was a positive impact on my mood or a negative impact on my mood and I would publish that on my blog. Uh, so it was my first thing I called it Morality-meter. And the strange thing that I learned fairly quickly was, were actually I learned two things. One of them was that um, it was, people actually looked at that information about myself and when I went into work, people were like, hey, it looks like you're at eight today. I could probably come to you with this, this problem, right? And the other thing was that like, just publishing, it made me th rethink about how I interacted with the rest of the web. And I found that a lot of that information, I, t I tended to like bias towards positive information positive links after I saw how many of them were negative. Um, so that's how I first started. And I thought like, you know, the why, what I track, how I track it and what I learn, like I really bias towards the first two. Like I have actually learned very little over the years, but um, I learned a lot about what works for me. And um, I sort of wanted to create a history of all that. So I dug up pictures and screenshots of things I've done over the last 12 years that might be of interest. And I sort of want to tell about like what I liked about each one. So my first thing was, this was actually the second thing. After the, the morality reader that was about links, I started tracking my morale, my health, my sleep, my alcohol, and my caffeine on a daily basis. And they were all on one to 10 scales. And I would publish that on my blog. And this was another sort of step towards the weird consequences of what happens when you sort of make this public to people. Like, you know, if I went out and I had 10 drinks one night, like everyone at work would know, right? Um, <laughs> And if I only had four hours of sleep, like a lot of things, like it made me think about the the, the balance between like what I do and what people know about me. Um, it definitely changed my identity. And as I did this for like three or four years, and eventually made it a public tool that a lot of people used, or not a lot. Back in the day, there's like 40 people that used it, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I thought it was pretty awesome that like even 40 people would be willing to publish this information about themselves. And Willow was one of them. Yeah. Actually, this one, this might be your screenshot, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't find my screenshots. <laughs> Those 10 drinks are not yours. Yeah. So this is a slightly different thing that I tracked by myself. Like, for the last six years, five, five years, I've been taking a picture at 8.36 every day and just posting what I'm doing at that time. So this is a slightly different take on tracking things. Like, I wanted to get rid of the curation of my life and turn it into, like, just a reporting of what was happening at a certain time every day. And so this has been a, like, probably the, of all the things I attract, the most rewarding thing over time because I end up being able to express myself without having to worry about is it cool enough, is it interesting enough for people to see. And the picture that it paints about my life is much more accurate to reality than the one that would show up on Instagram or, or other places that are more curated. And this was the beginning of like, this is when I sort of fell off the deep end on quantified self because I. I, I, I tracked those things for a long time and then I stopped for a couple of years and I was like, these things don't mean anything. There's no correlation between my sleep and my alcohol and my happiness. Uh, so I started trying to find like, what are the meaningful metrics that I can track? And so I sort of settled on these four things, and energy levels, focus, enjoyment, and stress. As like, these are the things that actually have an impact on my day-to-day -day life. And I wanted to make it more of an art project. So I sort of, every day I would sit down with this note card and like draw it out and I came up with this really complicated algorithm about like when this is when energy is high but stress is low that I'm like one of 12 different animals and I also <laughs> recommended certain things that I could do to help that particular emotional state for myself and I spent a long time sort of creating like an astrological system that uh, was while entertaining it didn't last that long it wasn't actually that meaningful to me um, but um, while I was going down that path I went a step further and I started um, trying to make find statistical um, correlations between things and seeing like when I feel like this this is how I behave that day and then how do I feel the next day and trying to find connections between all those different things and like I I came up with a point system where like every I would track like you know take a break in the middle of the day what, how, how, how often do I do that what moods were I in, was I in when I when that happened and how did I feel the next day? Um, writing morning pages or like, so that's another thing I've been doing for many years, like every morning just writing like stream of consciousness stuff. And that's always been a really therapeutic thing for me, but I never really proved that with quantified data. And so a lot of these things I was trying to find the meaning and 
the, finding the meaning has been always has, has been my quest, I guess, since the beginning, and why I often switch tools and try everything and see what works. Um, that has been when I when I get to a point where the meaning is not really bubbling up to the surface. Um, I generally abandon it pretty quickly. So I try everything, but a lot of things don't last very long. Um, and this is like an example. Like this is all a web app that um, I, I would end up getting more points for things if I hadn't done them in a while. Um, so like trying to figure out ways to like not not make myself feel guilty for not doing something, but actually giving myself more points for jumping back on the wagon and you know doing a good deed for someone or studying my mistakes or reviewing my week or reading a good book. Um, so this was like, the, I think this is a period of time when I had quit my job and like, I was sort of diving really deep into this problem and trying to figure it out. Um, and I sort of burned out on it at that point and thought, okay, there is no meaning in this stuff. I'm just gonna you know, find stuff that's much more at the surface level. Um, and uh, so it was a very important part of my, my history, I think, because you know, while I've always been a self-tracker, I've had conflicting opinions about the whole thing. Like I, sometimes I feel like it's just an, a, a compulsion that I have. Sometimes I feel like there is, a, there is something at the end of the tunnel. Sometimes I think that even though I want to find the answer, the answer is actually hundreds of years away, right? So this was sort of a continuity. So I, the next thing I did was I started a company that was about tracking really high-level um, behaviors on a daily basis, anything that could happen on a daily basis, like drinking coffee or listening to things that you're grateful for, or eating greens, or going on a run, and trying to come up with a way to track that on a daily basis. So it was called Health Month, um, and it's since been sold, but it's still running, if you guys like to try it out. And meanwhile, at the same time, so there's, see that there's a lot of different directions I'm going all the time. Um, this is my personal homepage where I just track uh, how many emails I get, or actually this is how many unread messages I have in my inbox. Um, and this is actually like about 115 and 72. Um, and I found that like whenever, the, whenever it gets above like this line pretty much is when I'm just stressed out about something. And I, I put this at the top because it ended up being one of the most accurate indicators of my, like, my internal life. Like, a very, I, it's a very outward objective signal of something that's inwardly happening and I can't, I would, if, if you ask me right here like, are you stressed out? I might say like yes or no, but it's, it's really only like a week later that I can really understand that about myself and so it became a very interesting signal to myself of like, hey, something's going on, you should look at what's going on and um, the same, I mean, that, that also had a very interesting impact of having people choose when to write to me for the, like, at, send me an email about something that I hadn't, you know, had a conversation about prior. Um, so, and then that long goal, this is like when I changed my password at Gmail and forgot to update my script. And then down here I have like, so for every single um, piece of content that I publish online, I do some linguistic analysis, analysis on it, um, pull it all in via RSS feeds, and I run it through a couple different dictionaries and scripts that can suss out some of the meaning. And so for example, this is like, um, tries to pull out um, the actions, like what is, what is this writing sort of talking about? Um, what, like maybe like it's a verb about what I'm doing on Twitter or for, on Facebook or Foursquare or Tumblr, um, and it sort of splits it out and says like, at 5 p.m. on Fridays, like, 25% of the time I'm, I'm talking about dinner. 11% of the time I'm talking about work. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff in there. And then this one is um, topical interest, uh, topical um, data, I guess, about what's being written about. Like money, eating, drinking, leisure. And a lot of it is like more entertainment than accurate. Like there's a lot of false positives and false negatives that get pulled in, but Overall, it often turns out to be interesting um, in some way. And then the emotional content of the stuff, like it happy 5% of the time, sad 27% of the time. And uh, it's been like one of the most, uh, it's one of the most rewarding things to publish because people always read more into it. Like 
this stuff gets published whether or not I go to my computer and type anything in, right? Like I'm doing other things around the internet. This stuff is being analyzed and published sort of behind my back. I, I don't actually see it. Um, and sometimes people come to me like, actually I got a lot of conversations for a while when this was about like death, right? Like I was, for a while I was obsessed with obit obituaries and I was, I was publishing a lot of obituaries and um, liking them on Twitter. And people were like, why are you so like, worried about death right now? And like, I'm not, I'm, and it took me like two or three times before I sort of made the connection between obituaries and, and death. And, and where did you say all those data sources are being pulled from? These are all from RSS feeds. So like Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, my blog, every, like there's probably 20 or 30 RSS feeds probably over the years that some of them I don't use anymore, but they still, so anything that can publish an RSS feed, I just add the URL and it pulls it in and does all this stuff. That's your 836 alarm. Oh, can you turn it off? <laughs> Or take a, take a picture? Sure. <laughs> oh, here's like a page down where I'm, I take my Foursquare uh, check-ins and for the last week and I break it down based on category. Here's all the different sources like Flickr, Tumblr, Foursquare, Twitter, and I just graph like, you know, by day, how much am I writing, publishing online. Um, and then this is like from my, my I, I've, I've been archiving all of this data for since 1999, basically, and um, you can sort of see like how the online content has been growing over time. That's month by month. Um, this was sort of like at the end of my last my company. Um, I sort of once again burned out on all this quantified stuff, like tools and gadgets and apps and services and things that you can, you know, access with your iPhone and I built like this paper app that was all about just trying to change one thing in your life by doing one thing different every day. It's called the Hipster Habit App. Um, <laughs> Hipsterhabitapp.com if you want to download it and print it out. And then PeaBrain is another really uh, experimental tool that I built that um, over my time so I should probably quit soon but I'll skip that one. If you like PeaBrain, if you want to check it out, PeaBrain.co. Um, and this is the last one that's interesting. It's like about, I sort of outsource my tracking where if anyone ever catches me complaining about something or talking shit about someone behind their back, I will pay them a dollar on the spot. And a lot of people don't want the dollar, so I also track and keep track of like when I can every once in a while pay $10 to the Red Cross or something. And that's actually one of the most interesting things I've been tracking lately. So what have I learned? Um, one of the interesting things I've learned is that the, the tools to measure things are often at the wrong precision level to the meaning that you can get out of them. Um, tracking steps, tracking calories, tracking your weight, they're all interesting, but they don't have a direct meaning to me. Um, much more interesting to me is to find the level at which it's meaningful to me, which is often like, did I walk to work? That often makes my day better. Did I eat a salad for lunch? Like, that often makes my day better. Um, Am I within my, my desired weight range? Like that, that's often a bigger, better indicator of my happiness than, than uh, anything else. Um, and then also to think about data in two different buckets. One of them is a bucket of objective data um, where, you know, how many drinks do you have? How many hours do you work? Versus the subjective data of like, was your day good or was it meaningful? And it's very important for me now to sort of make a big chasm between the two and only track one or the other and not to try to guess, not to, not to create the, there's a lot, of, there's a lot of data that's um, sort of a fuzzy middle ground where you're tracking things like, you know, um, like how good was your day and you think about like, oh, I, I hung out with this person, I had a good time. I would much rather just forget about what happened and just think purely irrationally about my day and think, do I want more of this day or less of this day? and make a decision without thinking rationally about it. Um, I definitely promote the use of agnostic tools. Excel is my favorite tool. Um, and there's also a new tool called Wizard that can take spreadsheets and do analytics on them. Um, I would love to go deeper into that. Um, if, you haven't, if you do like tracking things and you don't want to um, worry too much about fitting it into a certain tool, Wizard is pretty awesome. And this is sort of where I've ended up, is that you should work backwards from your fitness function. Um, this, this fitness function is my current best understanding of myself. 
So like Fun Off by itself is about um, you know, self-knowledge through numbers. And these are the, this is sort of the level that I understand my own happiness and um, enjoyment of life. Um, getting a certain amount of sleep, walking to work, um, eating salads and, and fruits and vegetables, doing some push-ups, doing some meaningful work, running, and then quality time with family and, and my, my son. And the interesting thing about it is that it's often Boolean. Like, it's not quantitative, really. It's, it's often just like, did it happen or did it not happen on that day? And so most of the things I track now are just Boolean yes or no answers about things. Um, and I track it all in a spreadsheet. So some things I can track like, so when I was talking about subjective versus objective, day of the week is objective. Whether, what city I woke up in is objective, because right now I'm traveling a lot between Seattle and San Francisco. How many hours of sleep I got, my weight, whether or not I walked to work, how much coffee and alcohol I had. These are all very objective pieces of data. And at the very end, I give my day a score between one and three. One is a below average day, three is an above average day, and two is everything else. And my goal currently, which is really uh, resonating with me recently, is to try to use this objective data to predict the subjective data, right? So just saying like, can I create a correlation between these two numbers, which would eventually prove that there is some connection. And um, my desired correlation is a 0.5. I can, um, for those that know statistics, like most correlation goes between one and negative one. One means there's a linear cor correlation or direct correlation. A negative one means that there are opposites, like basically one causes the opposite to happen. Zero means that there's no correlation. So over 0.5 would mean that there would be a positive correlation between the things I was tracking and how I rated the day. Um, so far, I have a <laughs> pretty much no correlation. So it's really interesting to think about how I have found no correlations wow. between even the most meaningful things in my life and how I rate the day. Um, wow. And so I want to create sort of a self-challenge to myself and also to anyone else that want to participate um, to try to come up with a fitness function for yourself that does correlate between subjective data, how you rate the day, how you like irrationally think about wanting more of this kind of day, and the objective things that happen. Um, I'm at the very beginning. I've only tracked the last 40 days um, on, in this system. Um, but I sort of wrote a post about it, and I would love anyone to try it out and see like, if you could find a correlation. I would love to hear about it. That's all I got. Cool. Awesome. I'm going to let you have three more. Yeah. So you completely ignored this, but three yes. minutes of questions. OK. Talk about the subjective rating of your day. Also, I, I didn't quite catch the scale. And then t tell me how you use the scale. You know I'm fascinated by that. Like yeah, so it's a one to three scale right now. Okay, and I, so it I, is I sort one of see to three scale. One is below average, two is average, three is above average. And for I sort of leave room for like really exceptional days can be four or zero. I haven't had any of those. So it, there, is a, there is a range, but generally I would like there to be an equal spread between the three. Um, just for some self calibration to understand, like, and I, I really want it to be a purely irrational rating. Like, I don't want my, my, I don't. When I write that number down, I don't think about like, what did I do? Did I like it? Like, was? Do you do it at the same time yeah, every day? I do it at 11 a.m. every day for the day previous. Ah, oh. interesting. Yeah, I generally fill out the spreadsheet at 11. But, but you just kind of sorry. Okay. So you kind of just subjectively sort of, uh, what, I don't like how my last 24 hours. It's really just like a gut instinct about more of that kind of day, less of that kind of day, or nothing, nothing really bubbled up, <coughs> and I just do two. Most of the days are two right now, but. Um. So I thought it was a really interesting graph of tracking. Because some, peop uh, some people have mentioned about mindfulness. Have you ever tracked your intention, like intention for the day? No, uh, I, I have in the past. I, I, one of the things I used to track was top of mind, like whatever the thing is like subconsciously is like just every time I'm resting, thinking about. Um, and that's interesting for a self-reflection. That generally comes up in my journaling and stuff, but I haven't really, I'm generally biased against subjective data for tracking because I often find that the precision is really wild and like the accuracy is very low. So. I, I mean, tracking morale over a four-year period, like, I feel like that was meaningless to me because I was tracking on a 10 scale 
and I was set up sort of was like comparing it to everything else and trying to guess like, and I went back and tried to find correlations in that data, and there was nothing. So generally, I, I avoid it, but except for yeah, having one as like a a, a mark trying that you're trying to hit or trying to prove. Okay, one last question. Yeah, I think it was you were. Um, what do you think, or how accurate do you think your subjective data is? Like, do you not think it's influenced by? I know you do it the day after. Surely your mood that day influences how you think about. Like how yeah, I mean that's the problem, is that subjective data is really impossible to, like, so I really just want it to be like irrational and um, the more irrational, like the more I'm sort of coming to terms with the fact that I can't have a rational subjective rating in my day, I guess. And so if I can, I mean, and one to three scale, there's very little room for error. Like you, you can be off by one in one direction, but I bet more often than not, you can get the right bucket. Um, I think that was the last one, but. Yeah, that's the last okay, question. Cool. Sorry, guys. Thanks. If you have more questions, yeah, please, I'll you're welcome to come and find them after, afterwards.